So the last time we were here, we were talking a little bit about seasons, but we hadn't quite gotten to it yet. What I had done for you was I drew a picture, and here's the sun, and here's the earth revolving around the sun. And we came to the conclusion that as the earth revolves around the sun, it doesn't make a perfect circle. It's elliptical. And because it's elliptical, that means that there will be a period of time where the earth is closest to the sun and a period of time where the earth is furthest from the sun. When the earth is furthest from the sun, we call that aphelion. And during aphelion, the earth is about 94 million miles away from the sun. We also stated that during perihelion, the earth is closest to the sun. And at this point, we're looking at about 91 million miles. So it's about a 3 million mile difference from perihelion to aphelion. Now, if this was the end of the story, it would be easy. And we could just simply move on to another topic. But the fact of the matter is, this becomes a little bit confusing because intuitively you would think to yourself, well, geez, at aphelion, when we're 94 million miles away from the sun, that must be winter time because we're furthest from the sun. But as it stands out, it's actually not winter time, it's summertime because aphelion falls in July, right around July the 3rd, as a matter of fact. Perihelion, when we're closest to the sun, you would expect that to be summer. But it's actually not summer. It's going to be winter for us because perihelion occurs right around January the 3rd. So what in the world is going on? Now, there was a little caveat to this, however, because we know that in the southern hemisphere, the seasons are exactly opposite to us. So July is summertime for us, but for our friends in Australia, that's wintertime. And January is winter for us, but for our friends in Australia, that's going to be summertime. So for them, it seems to be that the correlation of Earth's distance from or to the sun mimics the seasons. But truth be told, you can't have reasons for seasons in one part of the world being unique to the other part of the world. So our friends in Australia cannot say that the seasons are due to the Earth's proximity from the sun. There's got to be something else going on because the variable has to satisfy both the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. That's where we left off. The final conclusion was, well, if it's not proximity of the Earth to the sun, then it's got to be something else, and that something else is going to be the Earth's tilt. Okay? So let's talk about the Earth's tilt, and let's figure out what in the world is going on and what creates seasons. Earth's tilt is going to lead to two major variables. The first is going to be length of daylight hours. Depending upon where you are around the world. And the second variable due to tilt is going to be the angle of solar radiation. And I'll define what that means in just a second. All right. Before we get to that, okay, let me draw this. Here's the sun. You know that's too big. Here's the sun right there. Here's our planet of the ecliptic. Remember, it's that imaginary line going through space, and that's the plane with which the sun resides on. Let's draw in the summer solstice right here. So this is the Earth, and remember, it's tilted in this general direction toward the sun. Here's the equator. Here's the Tropic of Cancer. Here's the Tropic of Capricorn. So this would be the summer solstice right around June 21. On this side of the solar system, let's put the Earth again. And let's draw the winter solstice. So here's the equator. Wait a minute. Okay, here's the Tropic of Capricorn, 23 and a half south. Here's the equator, Tropic of Cancer. And this is December 21. Okay, so in our picture here, we're just taking a look at the Earth 200 or 
two seasons removed. So we start here at the summer solstice, the earth goes around the sun, and here is the winter solstice. Let's say for sake of argument that you're standing here on top of the Tropic of Cancer. You go outside at solar noon. When you go outside at solar noon on the Tropic of Cancer at 23 and a half degrees north latitude, the sun is at its highest point in the sky, meaning the sun's rising in the east, solar noon, and it's setting in the west. So solar noon is when the sun is at its highest point in the sky. According to this picture, at solar noon, the sun is going to be directly above this person's head. Everybody see that? In fact, let me draw it again over here. Here's dude. He's at the Tropic of Cancer. He goes outside. The sun is rising in the east, solar noon, and it's setting in the west. And at solar noon, the sun is directly above his head. We would say that the sun shares this person's zenith point. So zenith is the point directly above head. Nadir is the point directly below feet. So for this person, on June 21, the summer solstice, he goes outside at solar noon. The sun is directly above his head. No shadows are cast because the sun's directly above head. Everybody got that? A half a year later, Dude's still standing outside because he's a dumbass. Here he is. Now take a look. Where's the sun at solar noon? It's no longer directly above his head. As a matter of fact, the only place where the sun is going to be directly above head is for someone standing here at the Tropic of Capricorn at 23 and a half degrees south latitude. But for this person who's still here at 23 North, that's that person's zenith point. The sun is nowhere near this person's zenith point. And as a matter of fact, the sunlight is coming in at an angle of that much. Now you may say, well, what is that angle? Well, the sun here is going to be directly on top of the Tropic of Capricorn at 23 and a half degrees south latitude. This person is standing at 23 and a half degrees north latitude. And of course, this is zero, it's the equator. So this entire angle from 23 and a half south to 23 and a half north equals 47 degrees. So during the summertime, when this person goes outside, the sun is directly above head at solar noon. But when this person goes outside at winter time at solar noon, the sun is 47 degrees from zenith, which means it's right here. And the sunlight's coming in at a rather severe angle. Now, keep in mind, that's going to be the highest that the sun is going to get during that day. So the sun rises in the east, 47 degrees from zenith, solar noon, sets in the west. Shadows are really long, right? Can you all visualize that? So in the summertime, no shadows. The sun's coming down. It's piercing. But in the wintertime, it's coming in at a rather severe angle. It's a long shadow. It's the flashlight phenomena. Here, let's go to this picture here. So here in this little picture, I've got a flashlight. And you'll notice that in this set, the flashlight is coming down and all this light is concentrated over a fairly small surface area. Whereas in this picture, the light is coming down and it's stretched over a larger surface area. When we have this scenario, which is the summertime, the light is more magnified. It's more concentrated in a particular region. Here, the light stretches, so the energy is now getting distributed over a greater surface area. Again, this is another variable to the seasons. Summertime picture, wintertime picture. Does that make sense? I don't know. Um... OK, so let's draw Earth here. You know what? I don't want to draw it this way. It looks pretty and everything, but there's a better way that we can draw this. First of all, let's put the earth there. Here's the sun, and then let's put the earth here as well. So on this side, 
we've got the summertime picture. On this side, we've got the wintertime picture. Now, we've got our person standing right here in Rockhampton, Australia. Right? So that's zenith point and that zenith point. This is somewhat of a confusing picture. But what you do need to gather out of this is the following, as we talked about it a second ago. When you're standing at a particular location, the sun appears to be shifting every single day in the sky. It's getting either higher or lower depending upon what the date of the year is. We can say, therefore, that during the course of the year, the sun will reach its highest point and the sun will also reach its lowest point. So, on December 21st, this is the winter solstice, the sun would reach its lowest point relative to us. If, for example, you are standing at the Tropic of Capricorn at 23 and a half degrees south latitude, the sun is actually going to be directly above your head at solar noon. Therefore, we would say that the solar declination of the sun is 23 and a half degrees south. This will all make sense in just a second. On June 21, which is the summer solstice, if you're standing at the Tropic of Cancer at 23 and a half degrees north latitude, then the sun will be directly above your head. So we would say that the solar declination of the sun is 23 and a half north. If it's an equinox, whether it's the vernal or autumnal, September or March, if you're standing on the equator, then the sun is directly above your head, so the solar declination would be zero. Okay, let me try to explain this a little bit better. So remember, here's the sun. It's on this plane. And here's the Earth's tilt, and it's tilted toward the sun. If you're standing right here on the Tropic of Cancer at solar noon on this day, then you are right in line with the plane of the ecliptic. Your head is getting cut by that imaginary plane of the ecliptic, which means the sun is directly above your head at solar noon. Now, as you come over here, you'll notice that you're right here. You're no longer in plane with the plane of the ecliptic. You're above that plane. The equator, though, is cutting right through the plane of the ecliptic. So if you're standing on the equator, the sun is directly above your head. The equator is at zero degrees. So that means that the solar declination is zero. It's directly above the equator. It's directly above zero. Here, the sun is directly above 23 and a half north. So that's what the solar declination would be. It's directly above 23 and a half north. Here in the winter solstice, the equator is now above the plane of the ecliptic. But the Tropic of Capricorn at 23 and a half degrees south, that's cutting right through the plane. 23 and a half degrees south. So that's what the solar declination would be. So solar declination is simply just where the sun is relative to your position on Earth. And whenever that sun is directly above a point, that's what the solar declination would be. And here for the equinox, again, the equator is cutting right through the plane of the ecliptic, which means what's the solar declination? It's zero because the plane is passing right through zero, which is the equator. So here's another way that we can solve this problem, and we can do it in a very simple fashion. Let's erase all this stuff, and let's just simply draw the Earth. So here's the equator, Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. And what I'm going to do is draw an imaginary line that reaches out into space. And I'm just simply going to call that line the solar declination line. So right here in the solar declination line, what would that be? It's zero because it's right above the equator. Right here is 23 and a half degrees north. And right here would be 23 and a half degrees south. So let's say that we are in Rockhampton, Australia. Rockhampton is right here at 23 and a half degrees south latitude. The date is the winter solstice. And we know that on this date, the solar declination is 23 and a half degrees south latitude. So we're going to put the sun right here. The sun, therefore, is directly above this person's head. Solar zenith angle 
is the angle that the sun makes with your zenith point. Let me say that again. Solar zenith angle is the angle that the sun makes with your zenith point. So in this picture, what would the solar zenith angle be? Zero. Because here the sun and the zenith share the same exact location. So for our friend in Rockhampton, Australia, sun rises in the east, boom, solar noon. It is directly overhead, so the solar zenith angle here would be zero degrees, and that's what the answer to this question is. Let me do another one. Let's just do San Diego. I mean, screw Rockhampton, Australia. Who cares about them? Let's concentrate here on us. Okay, so let's erase this stuff. All right, here we go. We're right here at 32 degrees north latitude. So I'm going to put on my solar declination line 32, because that's us. Let's first look at the summertime. So during the summer solstice, June 21, the solar deck is 23.5 north. Correct? So during the summer solstice, the solar declination is 23 and a half north, which means if you're standing anywhere on the Tropic of Cancer at solar noon on this day, the sun will be directly above your head because that's where the sun is, right at that point. So let's draw the sun here at 23 and a half degrees north. You and I aren't at 23 and a half degrees north. We're at 32. So we're here, and the sun is here. So this is the solar zenith angle, the angle that your zenith point makes with the sun. Does anybody know what that is by looking at the picture? I mean, I'm not the greatest artist in the world, but if that's 32 and that's 23 and a half, then what's that little snippet? Eight and a half degrees? 32 minus 23.5 equals eight and a half degrees. So, in our summertime, we go outside at solar noon, not December 21, sorry man, uh, June 21. We go outside at solar noon, the sun's rising in the east, boom. Highest point in the sky is only eight and a half degrees from zenith. That means in our summertime, the sun is less than a fist from zenith. It is almost directly above our head. I mean, it can get pretty hot out here, especially if you go to East County. Go like El Cajon, Ramona, on your way to Yuma. It's three digits, 100 degrees plus. Of course, you get to the coastline, it's a bit cooler for reasons that we'll talk about later, but we've got some serious summertime that we can have out here. Now compare that to the winter. In the winter time, December 21, the solar declination is 23 and a half degrees south. So the sun would be right here. This is the solar zenith angle. Anybody see what that is? Let me erase all this stuff so it's better. Oh man, this is going to take forever. Hold on. There we go. So the sun is right here during winter solstice because it's directly above the Tropic of Capricorn. We are, however, right here, so this is the solar zenith angle. 32 to 0, 0 to 23 and a half. So what's that angle? Yeah, 55 and a half. It's 32 plus 23.5 is 55 and a half degrees. That's extreme. You know what, if you can visualize this, imagine that this is you standing here and you're looking straight up, but the sun is south of you by 55 and a half degrees from zenith. See if we can draw that right here. So here you are, there's your zenith, and at the highest point in the day, the sun's right here. It's like 55 and a half degrees from zenith in the southern sky. Seriously long shadows. That's pretty impressive. Think about this for a second. You really got to think about this. In the summertime, 
The sun is only eight and a half degrees from zenith for us. It's almost directly above our head. In the winter time, it's 55 and a half degrees from zenith. And that's the highest it's going to get during the course of that day. I mean, talk about the flashlight phenomena. Summertime is coming straight down. Wintertime is coming at a really sharp angle. Now, let's say that it was an equinox, either vernal or autumnal. Well, the sun is right here at that point. So what would the solar zenith angle be? Sun's at zero. We're at 32. So what's this angle? It's just 32. So that's cool. This is what's going on in San Diego. If we start in the summertime, rises in the east, solar noon sets in the west. Every single day, as we approach fall, the sun gets slightly lower and lower and lower in the sky at solar noon. We hit the equinox, September 21, the sun is 32 degrees from zenith. Then, as we continue to approach the winter solstice, the sun keeps going down in the sky every single day until we finally hit winter solstice, and now we're at about 55 and a half degrees from zenith. The day after the winter solstice, guess what happens? Now, every single day, the sun gets a little bit higher in the sky until we reach the vernal equinox, and now we're at 32. And now every single day the sun gets a little bit higher in the sky until we hit summer solstice at eight and a half. So throughout the entire course of the year, the sun is doing this action. Every single day it's getting either slightly lower in the sky or slightly higher in the sky. And of course, this contributes to the seasonal shifting. We got this? And we're going to have a few of these questions on the exam. You want me to do another one? I'll do one more. I could do this stuff all day. I know you don't want to hear that. <laughs> but to, to me, it's sort of a non-thinking game. Again, it's mechanics. You reach a certain point. And visually speaking, I like it because I can start to visualize sun and earth. And to me, that's a little bit more appealing than trying to memorize stuff. That's just me. So let's draw earth here again. Equator, Cancer, Capricorn. Solar declination line, 0, 23.5 north, 23.5 south. Okay, so give me any location in the world that you want, like you're curious about and you want to know what their seasonal variation is like. Ecuador. Ecuador. Well, Ecuador is easy. Let's say we go to Quito and we're right there on the equator, right? So here we are on the equator. So we already know that during the vernal and the autumnal equinoxes, what's the summer or what's the solar declination? Zero. So the solar zenith angle during either equinox is zero. So the sun will be directly above your head two days out of the year if you're in Ecuador. Let's say that it is summer solstice, then that means the sun is here. So this is our solar zenith angle. Anybody see what that is? You're at zero, the sun's at 23 and a half. So what's that angle? 23 and a half. Sun is in your north sky. During the winter solstice, sun's right here. So what's this solar zenith angle? 23 and a half. Now the sun is in your southern sky. So for you in Ecuador, the sun is getting no lower than 23 and a half degrees off zenith and it's going to get maximum height at zero. It's a really interesting place. It can get extraordinarily hot out there. 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours a night, every single day of the year, coupled with sun being very high in the sky. Notice, too, that in Ecuador, the sun can be in the north sky or it can be in the south sky. South sky is just below you. North sky is just above you. Take a look at San Diego again, though. We're at 32. Notice the sun never gets higher than 23. So the sun is always residing between the tropics. It's never getting higher than 23 and a half north. It's never getting lower than 23 and a half south. But we're in San Diego at 32. The sun is always in our southern sky. It is always south of us. The sun will never be up here. It is always down here. 
Keep this in mind as you're driving along the county and you're taking a look at a mountain, Callus Mountain, whatever mountain it could be, or the mountains down there. <laughs> what are they called? Never mind. Not important. They're not like big ass mountain. But if you take a look at it, look at the north face versus the south face. The aspect. South facing mountain is always pointing toward the sun. North facing is not. So you'll probably see more vegetation on the north side because the water is maintained longer before it evaporates. South side is constantly getting that sun. Take a look at a tree. Go to, um, whatchamacallit, east of here, on your way to Mount Laguna, and take a look at the trees. And here are the trees, and you're going, let me find that moss. What side does the moss grow on? Well, for us, the moss is going to grow on the north side of the tree, typically, because the south side is always pointing toward the sun, and the north side is not, so it's not going to get the same amount of evaporation. Therefore, you can have moss. And that's why you'll have moss grow on one side of the tree versus the other. So here in San Diego, again, sun is always in the southern sky. Always in the southern sky. If you're buying a home and the windows are facing toward the south, you're going to get a lot of light in your home. If all the windows are north, it's going to be pretty dark. If you got a roof and you want to build solar panels, if the panels are facing that way, north, ain't going to work as well as if they're facing south. 